What do you think? I'm like, oh, God, you scared me. I forgot you were in the car. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, don't do Wave your hand or something. You know, she, she never shuts her brain off, man. She's always, like, buzzing. She has a hard time falling asleep, you know, and, but she's always buzzing. And if I, you know, I ask her something, it's like I get this you know, myriad of answers. And then, you know, me, it's like I can actually kind of shut my brain down, you know. And so there's times when Kathy and I will be like, you know, in the car driving, like, you know, we're going somewhere, you know, out to eat or maybe driving to a show. And, you know, and I'm just kind of shut down. I'm just kind of, you know, doing the drive. And all of a sudden something hits her and she just turns and goes, honey, what are you thinking? <laughs> and how many of you guys know the answer? <laughs> Shout it out to me. What are you thinking? Nothing. Nothing. You think we're lying. We're not, I swear we're not lying. We can actually think of nothing. It's God's gift. It's called testosterone poisoning. Did you know that the chemical wash of testosterone actually kills some brain cells? It's true. And I was like, what do you think? Like, oh God, you scared me. I forgot you were in the car. Oh my gosh. Yeah, don't do, wave your hand or something. <laughs> Golly. Oh. But we've been married for 31, uh, October the 14th will be our 31st wedding anniversary, and it's really kind of fun. Yeah, and we, I, I, I yeah, thank you. She's right up there. She's right there. Um, we, I like that we're different. You know, in our culture now, I don't know what's going on, but everybody's trying to homogenize us into thinking the same way and being the same way and having the same thought. And that's boring. Look, I, I know that there's conflict when we disagree, but it's also kind of fun, man. You know, that, you know it, I mean, really, because you, you want some difference in your life, you know? And the fact that we are different is wonderful. And I think that the biggest thing when it comes to marriage, I think the biggest defining point is when it comes to being intimate. Like men, we have a thing for intimate, which is chicka chicka bow wow, right? <laughs> and women, it's conversation. <laughs> Let's talk. And then what? <laughs> right? And so I do a lot of premarital counseling. I started working with couples and everything, and they would come in stupid, absolutely stupid, because they were in love. And they would say things like, oh, see, we're so in love. We have everything in common. We're just alike. We like the same things. We finish each other's sentences. We're just alike. <laughs> well, then one of you is unnecessary. <laughs> it's kind of like borderline their uh, narcissist of marrying yourself, right? <laughs> Because these, these young couples, they have no idea what they're in for. Because that's not love. That's infatuation. And so what I try to tell them is, go, look, can I help you understand what a real love, being, loving someone unconditionally, what it really looks like? Can I, can I share an example? And they're like, oh, please do. And I go, okay, do either one of you know what a colonoscopy is? <laughs> we don't even like the sound of that. Well, it's going to get a little worse. <laughs> You see, when one or both of you turns 40, you're going to have to have a medical procedure where the night before you're going to drink this stuff and you will never want to poop again. <laughs> then you're going to show up bright and early at the hospital and they're going to take a high-powered air canister and they're going to go in your back door <laughs> and they're going to fill you so full of air you're going to think you're a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade balloon. <laughs> And then they're going to take a fiber optic cable with a camera on it and a light on the end, and they're going to go looking for things. But the cool thing is, is that you're going to be sound asleep the whole time. Here's where love comes in. When it's time for the air to come out, you got to be wide awake. And the other one has to sit there and pat the other one on the hand and go, it's okay, honey, just let it out, just let it out, just let it out, just let it out. That's love. That's commitment to sit there and deal with that because my wife never tooted before we were married. <laughs> Whole time we were dating, never tooted. And then I thought she was incapable. And then after we got married, she had this dog and that dog had the worst gas on the planet. <laughs> I'm really, it was all, the dog was sickening, you know. And then the dog died and I was like, man, there's something wrong with the carpet. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> 
But the thing we fought about more than anything initially was intimacy. Because, you know, guys, we're not real subtle about it. We're kind of like, won't do it. <laughs> wow, take me, cowboy. You know, I mean, yeah. Right? <laughs> Women want to be romance. They want to be, you know, talked to. They want to be wooed. They want to be, you know, just bring them into the moment, you know. And so I didn't know any of this. And so we had been married a couple of months. And I got a little handsy with her, you know, and she slapped my hand away. <laughs> I said, come on, honey, we're married. And she said, well, if you want to make love to me in the bedroom, you need to start by making love to me in the kitchen. <laughs> now, every woman knows what she meant. And every guy is like me going, well, take your clothes off in the kitchen. <laughs> I had not thought about doing it in the kitchen. <laughs> but I'm all for it. <laughs> right? You want to be romanced in the kitchen. Right? And it's so weird because like, you know, it's totally different too. Like I, I, I was working with this one couple one time and, and she came in and she was so upset and she's like, oh, Steve, I married, a, I, I, I married a sex fiend. And I said, really? And I'm like, dude, are you looking at stuff? No, no, I promise not. I go, well, what's the problem, sweetheart? She goes, he wants to have sex with me all the time. In every room, all the time. What's wrong with him? Nothing. <laughs> Sweetheart, this boy saved himself for marriage. He's been waiting for this for a long time. <laughs> you need to buckle your chin strap, sweetheart, and hold on. <laughs> right? Because you weren't told this, ladies. I feel so sorry for you. You probably weren't told. If you grew up in a church, you weren't told that, you know, they're in the mood all the time, right? <laughs> like, why, why, why is he in the mood? Because you're in the room with him. <laughs> Like if he sees you walk by, he thinks you're coming on to him. <laughs> if you're getting ready to go somewhere, do not come out half dressed. He thinks it's like, hey, yay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you walk by in a towel, you better run for your life. <laughs> and if he sees you naked, <laughs> it's game on, girlfriend. <laughs> but if you see, and you don't think that way because you don't want to see him that way. Right? You, there's nothing attractive about him being naked. He's like, hey, baby. You're like, oh, stop, honey. Don't dance. Don't. Stop hopping. Stop hopping. Oh, my gosh. I threw up in my mouth a little bit. I'm so... Oh, stop. So we had this nonverbal thing that we, we like to do. You know, it's like, it's like we have these two candles on our nightstands. And when one of us is in the mood, we light our candle. And then when the other one lights their candle, it's like... <laughs> Right? So typically, I, I light my candle first. <laughs> now, that's not fair. I always light my candle first. <laughs> yeah, and I'll walk past the bedroom to see if, you know, Kathy's candle's lit. And if it's not lit, I just assume that, you know, she hasn't been in there, you know, so I'll. <laughs> Genius, right? So I'll send her on little errands to, you know, little romantic errands into the bedroom, like, honey, where are my toenail clippers? And I'll be honest with you, gang, <laughs> it's kind of a cute thing to do, but <laughs> there have been times when I've walked into our bedroom and my candle's been blown out. <laughs> See, guys, you have to learn to do it. Like, Kathy, one time, Kathy said, you know, sorry, man, I'm sorry. I don't know why that's so funny to me. Anyway. Um, <laughs> She said, you know, if you, if you want to, if you want to have, you know, relations, you know, she goes, you've got to, you've got to touch me non-sexually. I'm like, you can do that? <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> this is working for me, baby. Light your candle. Light your candle. Dry bar comedy, man. I remember my first clean show. This is, I, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was, a, I was a nightclub comic, and I was out touring with a headliner. But I don't want to, I don't want to say their name because you know I, I think it's really, uh, I don't know. It's kind of unlovely to kind of drop names about people that I've worked with that you're never going to meet. <laughs> 
And so I'm out on this tour, you know, and, and this, this newspaper reporter came and, you know, did a, did a story on him and then did a little thing on me. And somehow I had mentioned that I had started going to church. And so they released this newspaper article and it talked all about this other comic and right at the bottom it said, opening for this comedian, Christian comedian, Steve Geyer. <laughs> what? I wasn't a Christian comedian. I had just recently started going to church. There's a difference. <laughs> and so somebody saw that and called my agent and booked me to do a senior adult Valentine's Day banquet for a Southern Baptist church. <laughs> You're laughing because you weren't there. <laughs> Nobody told me I had to change my material. And I'm just firing it away, you know, and there's people in the back going, crucify him, we want Barabbas. <laughs> right? Do we have any churchgoers in here? Anybody go to church? Some? Yeah? Go, go. Oh, my people. There you, go. you know, this is what I learned. People say, well, what was the difference between doing nightclubs and going to church? Nothing. <laughs> Both a bunch of liars. <laughs> Because in nightclubs, you meet people and they're always scamming you, you know, you know, married guys pretending like they're single and all that kind of stuff. But man, I have never had so many people lie to me until I started going to church, you know? And it's in the lobby, you know? Because in the morning, you know, people, hey, how are you doing? Great. You liar. <laughs> man, why are you going to, if everything was going great, you wouldn't go to church. <laughs> Things are going, you're going to church because you need some help, right? How's it? Great. Oh, I'm just under the spout where the glory's coming out. <laughs> I'm going to punch you in the neck. <laughs> right? Hey, hey, have, you ever, have you ever lied at church? Somebody, you, like you had a really crummy morning and people, hey, you don't look great, you know? How, how many of you, come on, be honest. How many of you ever had a fight with your spouse on the way to church? Come on, let me see. Come on. <laughs> Isn't that fun? You know, you're ready to go and you're, you, you can see the church parking lot in the distance. You're almost there and then poof, it happens, right? And you're yelling at each other, no, you shall, no, you shall, yeah. And then we hit the church parking lot and we're like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> if we could only hear what was going on in your car, I'm going to kill you. No, really, I am. <laughs> First, I'm going to shoot you <laughs> and then I'm going to push you off a roof. That's what I'm going to do. And you walk in, how's it going? Great. And you know, you feel compelled because you know, the, these people are handing out bulletins, you know, they're, they're not counselors, you know? And so, you know, but you know, wouldn't you just love one time when somebody says, how you doing? You go, do you really want to know? <laughs> They'd be like, um, is there a volunteer coordinator that I can talk to? I wasn't uh, trained for this, right? You know? But wouldn't it be great if just one time you just said, do you really want to know? And the person said, yeah, man. Come on, man, be real with me. You, you look a little disheveled. What's going on? Well, if you want to know the truth, on the way to church, I got into a fight with my wife. And we started yelling and screaming at each other in front of the kids. I can't believe what came out of my mouth, man. And she's still sitting in the church parking lot, crying her makeup off in the car. Could you go pray with her? I have to go preach. <laughs> it's real, isn't it? You married people know about that, right? You know what they say, love is blind, but marriage is an eye opener, right? How many of you, when you were dating, you did not know what you were in for after you got married, right? Because when you were dating, you were infatuated, you were not in love. There's the difference. Because when you're infatuated, every, nothing bothers you. And you're on the never ending phone conversation. Oh yeah, I love you too, okay. Did you hang up? Oh, me neither, oh, this must be true love. Oh, shut up. <laughs> You do not know true love. How many of you, I did this. I would travel, I would drive like 45 minutes just to see Kathy for 10 when we were dating. And in our 31 years of marriage, there are times I won't go in the kitchen if she's in there. Because <laughs> there's butcher knives in the kitchen. Because, you know, when you're dating, you're on your best behavior and everything, you know? And, and I, I really didn't know the, the differences that there were between men and women. Like, I, I grew up with a mom. I didn't have a dad growing up. And so my mother taught me things that my dad should have taught me. So for a long time, I used to throw a ball like this. 
<laughs> it's funny now, but I'm the third grade, man. And then I struggled with, you know, being a man. I thought, well, when I could grow a mustache, then I'll be a man. And then I realized my grandmother's got a mustache. <laughs> right? And so, there, there, you know, we had all these differences. And when we were dating and stuff, I, they didn't really manifest until, you know, we got married. Then all of a sudden it was like, man, I had no idea that women don't smell their underwear to see if they're clean. <laughs> That's a man thing. Because women know if they're on the floor, they're dirty. Men, we don't know. Can't tell by looking at them, they're always that color. You ask any guy in this room, you go, hey man, are those underwear clean? He'll walk over, pick them up. No. And they're not even mine, man. Golly, that's just... <laughs> and ladies, if you're married, you know you, you've tried to throw your husband's underwear away and you know they were in the trash can and the next thing you know, they're back in their drawers. <laughs> you're like, what is, are they lucky? No, they're not. It's not a lucky pair or anything. See, it doesn't matter to us how many holes are in it as long as the elastic at the, sto at the top still works. <laughs> if it snaps back, doggone it, it's a pair. <laughs> Don't throw those away. And just the little different nuancey things, like Kathy's very clean, and like Kathy will use a towel once and then it's dirty. I will use a towel until I take it off the towel rack and it stays bent. You know what I'm talking about, right? In the bathroom, and that freaked me out. Because I, you know, I was a bachelor for a long time, and so when I got married, I, you know, I, I never decorated my bathroom before I got married. I didn't have decorations. I had, you know, like, you know, you walk into my bathroom, there's toilet paper, there's some deodorant, a toothbrush, and a magazine, okay? Like you don't read when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, I forgot, cell phones. Okay, never mind. <laughs> what has our culture become, right? <laughs> but I get married and I walk into our bathroom and on the counter where I used to have nothing, <laughs> There's a little city. <laughs> what is all this stuff? And I look over at my toilet's got a fur coat. It's got a little matching lid, little hat for the lid and a little rug. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> You're all dressed up with nowhere to go, aren't you? Look at you. You look cute. <laughs> and Kathy, no guys, no kid. Kathy bought a toilet brush. And I had never owned a toilet brush in my life. And to this day, I still prefer toilet paper. <laughs> you gotta have like a callus to use that brush, man. You gotta, you know. <laughs> I've been doing stand-up for 43 years and people always ask me, what's your favorite joke? I go, that one. And I go, why? I go, well, number one, because I think it's funny. And number two, it makes religious people go like this. <laughs> and my favorite is because about a third of the audience still hasn't gotten it yet. <laughs> you mean he cleans the toilet with toilet paper? No, he wipes it. Oh, that's... But the greatest joy in our life, and not just our children, we're, we're, very, we're very proud of our two kids. Our daughter's a flight attendant, so she points at things for a living. I think that's kind of cute, you know? Sometimes we have guests over, we show off, hey honey, show me where the coat closet is. It's <laughs> my girl. <laughs> and our son is a police officer, and uh, he and his, his wife uh, have uh, blessed us with two little uh, grandbabies. And I, we're just, we're over the moon for, for Jude and Jameson. And um, what, what I am hoping more than anything is that there's not that craze that happened when my daughter was a girl, and it was that stupid beanie baby thing. <laughs> Do you remember that when, you know, people would fight each other for this, you know, bag of rice with eyes glued on it, you know? <laughs> right? And so, but it really, it became a phenomenon in our, in our country, and it's crazy. And so I was thinking about this when I was thinking about, I wonder what, I hope Jude and Jameson don't have a thing like that. And it took me back to a time when I was on a tour. Uh, I was in Canada for about a month, and 
I'm coming back, and over the course of the tour, I had been picking up Beanie Babies for my daughter, and like, you know, like this store here, there, and they had retired them here in the States, but they were available in Canada. <laughs> what is wrong? See, the Canadian bacon thing, y'all know what that is? The ham cut in a circle? <laughs> okay, Canadians are kicking our butts, y'all. So anyway, so... <laughs> So anyway, so I'm, I, I've got like, I've got, a, I've got a dozen Beanie Babies and I've got, I've got them in this little paper shopping bag with a string handle and everything and, and I, I'm ready to come home and, and I'm going to clear immigration. And you know if you travel internationally, if you're in a country for a certain amount of time doing work, they like to have, you know, the 20 question time. Want to make sure you did what you were supposed to do and see what you purchased, right? So I didn't put the Beanie Babies in the luggage. I kept them in the shopping bag. So I'm in immigration. They said, uh, did you purchase anything? And I said, yes. And they said, how much did you purchase? And I said, this amount. And they said, what did you purchase? And I said, Beanie Babies. And they went, excuse me? I'm not, I'm not kidding. And I went, and I'm a little smart alecky. So I went, Beanie Babies, like that. <laughs> and just then, four customs officials, two of them with handguns, surrounded me. And my first thought was, should I have said cocaine? <laughs> They said, come with us. They took me to the search and seizure area. So I said over the door. And as I walk in, there's a guy standing behind a stainless steel, looked like a medical table, putting on rubber gloves with the biggest hands I had ever seen in my life. And I thought to myself, there are no Beanie Babies where you might think there are Beanie Babies. <laughs> and if you search me, I will have a seizure. So here's the best part. My, my luggage and product and stuff is all on the, on, the, on the stainless steel table and everything, but I was still holding the Beanie Babies in the paper bag. And so I'm sitting there, and my, you know, I have a conscience, and I'm just starting to get to me, and this little devil popped up on the shoulder and said, hey, man, don't tell them the Beanie Babies are in the bag. <laughs> and I was wrestling with my conscience, and then a little angel popped up on this shoulder and said, yeah, don't tell him. <laughs> now this guy is going through about a month's worth of dirty underwear. And I'm thinking, them gloves ain't gonna help you at all. <laughs> and finally he goes, there's no Beanie Babies in here. And I said, I know, they're in this bag. He was not happy. <laughs> Snatched it out of my hand and laid him out on the table. He said, how many did you purchase? I said, I bought a dozen. He said, you have 12 here. And there's this little voice that's like, can we come out and play? No, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> What are you doing with all of these Beanie Babies? Oh, please let us come out now, for the love of God, be quiet. <laughs> what are you doing with all these Beanie Babies? What I wanted to do was go, I'm kind of lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no friends. <laughs> These Beanie Babies? Yeah, my friends. <laughs> Sometimes they talk to me, too. <laughs> Listen, kill the customs agent. Kill the customs agent. <laughs> but I didn't do it. I didn't. I promise I didn't do it. I just went, they're for my little girl. I, I, my, my daughter collects them and everything, and I'm just taking them home to her. And he goes, well, how do I know you're not a broker? And I go, what's that? He goes, people that buy them here in Canada and resell them in the States. And I said, people do that? He said, yeah. He said, you're looking at a $10,000 fine or 30 days in jail for a bag of rice with eyes glued on it. <laughs> now, I'm panicking, not only because I may be going to jail, but the condition of our culture that this stupid little thing is causing me all this grief, right? So I had the solution. I said, well, here, why don't you just, I'll, I'll prove to you that I'm not a broker. You tear the tags off, you keep the tags, and I'll take the Beanie Babies to my daughter. Now, ladies, what happens when you take the tags off? They lose their value and everything. In other words, they become a child's toy. <laughs> the irony should kill us all, okay? I promise you, I am not making this up. I said, tear the tags off, you keep the tags, and I'll take the Beanie Babies to my daughter. And he said, oh, don't tear the tags off. You might want to sell them later. <laughs> guys, thank you very much for being here. My name is Steve Geyer. It's been a pleasure to be with you. God bless you guys. Thank you.